The following feature presentation is brought to you by the Steady There to Maze of Fire 2000. With this amazing new mechanism, you can turn anything into delicious, fresh corn. Your pesky boss at work giving you trouble? Turn them into corn. Someone cutting you off on the way to your family trip to the asteroid belts? Shoot those spacecraft with corn and laugh as they run out of oxygen. Feeling a little bit hungry? Turn that tree into corn and make some freshly baked cornbread. Never be hungry or picked on again with the new Maze of Fire 2000 coming to a Walmart space market near you. And now, for the feature presentation. Very recently I started playing Fallout New Vegas and honestly I could go on for hours discussing what this game does right, but there's one choice in respect to the aesthetics of the setting that really intrigued me and made the sprawling open world just that much more atmospheric. And that was the melding of the mid 20th century American culture with that of the futuristic technologies and science fiction seen throughout the Fallout world. In the wasteland you could be fighting radioactive mutants with a plasma rifle while Frank Sinatra plays on a classic radio. You can purchase laser pistols by scavenging for spare bottle caps pulled from old-fashioned glass bottles. From the posters on the walls to the billboards on the highway, there's no doubt that despite taking place several hundred years into the future, the culture in the Fallout universe is still locked in the mid-1900s. But this raises some questions. Why did the devs choose to do this, and why did they choose to pay homage to this specific period in American history? Well, the answer to the latter is pretty clear once you consider what was going on during the 1940s and 50s, when the aesthetic of American culture was most like that of fallouts. Here's a little history lesson. During the mid-20th century, the country was plagued with foreign conflict. Almost directly after the conclusion of World War II and the first real usages of the atom bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, the American nation got involved in a nuclear arms race, primarily with their rival, the USSR. This period became known as the Cold War, and it brought with it the threat of a potential World War III that loomed over the globe as tensions continued to brew between nations, and the rise of nuclear weapons brought with it societal qualms of a plausible nuclear apocalypse. So with this in mind, the Fallout universe can be looked at as an example of what is known as retrofuturism. Retrofuturism is a trend in the creative arts that's a little difficult to define, but essentially it is a media that depicts the future as seen from the past. In many cases, such as fallouts, retrofuturism delineates many predictions for the future while also leaving traces of elements from the culture in which they are derived from, whether it be in the quality of the presentation of the media or in small bits of evidence found inside the media itself. Like take the totally real advertisement that I showed earlier, or even a cartoon like the Jetsons and you could really see what I mean. In the Jetsons, the art style, combined with the lower production quality by today's standards, gives it a very retro feel to it, despite taking place in the distant future. That's because it's an example of retrofuturism, it's how the past imagined their future. Even the movie iRobot will probably be considered to be a work of retrofuturism in due time. It's just kinda scary to think about. Anyways, although Fallout was created in modern times, the entire universe is derived from the future as seen from the 1950s, hence the constant references to rockets and nuclear technologies, along with the aesthetically retro remnants of a former society hidden beneath all that post-war rubble. Like I said, it's how society in the 50s would have imagined their country in the future, albeit in the worst case scenario. But how does this retrofuturism hoopla aid in the building up of atmosphere and world development? Well, that may require a little bit more of a subjective answer. I believe that this juxtaposition between the rubble-filled grey world alongside the happy-go-lucky aesthetics creates a unique sense of eeriness that isn't found in a lot of other games. It's just, well, unsettling to see the remnants of a crumbled culture reside in those old-fashioned and cheery graphics. Repcon, the once booming rocket facility that flaunted their prowess with large billboards, is now infested with ghouls. Or even just a dilapidated old roller coaster in Prim, now covered in rust and grit. They're all rather ironic reminders of what the world used to be, and the world that the player wanders through now is just a mere empty shell of its past. Seeing the cheery cartoons and listening to that old music directly contrasts the overworld, which is a complete desolate and grim wasteland. This game mixes our comfortable, rather jovial past with our feared apocalyptic potential future, and although these two pieces of history would seem immiscible, they perfectly dovetail with each other to successfully produce a fantastic atmosphere and tone. And I believe that this direct contrast alone is capable of instilling a great amount of uneasiness and uncomfortability in the player as he or she wanders around the world, which is crucial for a post-apocalyptic setting like Fallout. And it looks like Fallout isn't the only form of media to do things like this. I've been noticing a trend in the recent games that I've been playing and or watching. Bioshock certainly builds the setting in a very similar way that Fallout does, but mixing a retro-futuristic but dilapidated overworld with some aesthetics from the 1950s to produce some fantastic atmosphere. Even in movies, there's sometimes the utilization of cheerful older assets to contrast the dark imagery that is going on in order to produce that feeling of uneasy terror in the viewer. Like that infamous Tiny Tim song, Tiptoe Through the Tulips, made infamous by their horror movie Insidious. 
When a piece of art takes something that is somewhat familiar to us but warps it into something unfamiliar, it can create a heavy load of fear. The developers and producers know what triggers us, and are able to craft various tones and feelings with just a few changes in aesthetic. In Fallout's case, they took an apocalyptic wasteland and carefully sprinkled some mid-20th century on it to produce one of the most interesting, yet hair-raising post-apocalyptic worlds in a long time. While the wasteland is but a mere decayed skeleton of its former self, the tiny remnants of the lost civilization give it more life than meets the eye. And these retro-futuristic design choices even help boost the sense of desolation and insecurity that the player feels while playing Fallout games. Hopefully Fallout 4 can manage to capture this mood just as well when it comes around. Fingers crossed. My name's Ninjani, and thanks for watching.